Can you imagine a time before social media? Can you remember a time before social media? Can you imagine a time before media at all, before the print in press where simple gossip and communication was the only means by which we could create cultural artifacts? Well, now we have moved in a hyperspace with social media. Things can emerge and appear, and I don't even know what the hell they are, like the Karen meme. I don't know what it means at this point. By the end of this video, I will know what it means. Let's work it out. Other than I know it's a sort of a meme-ish uh, derisory term for a type of person, female, I think exclusively. Let's learn about it now. Karen is generally characterized as an irritating, entitled woman, sometimes as an ex-wife who took custody of the kid. Well, it's a bit sexist if it's uh, about women who took, uh, like, you know, is it a bit fathers for justice? It's weird, isn't it? Men's rights, women's rights, gender, equality, sexual identity. What are we going to do? Are we going to ever be able to transcend it? Am I going to be able to participate because of these things? Like I have got, I am a white man, of course. And what do do we all have to take positions on these kind of things? This, I mean, I suppose a, a, like remember there was that boomer meme. That was a meme for a while, wasn't it? I suppose they're effective reposts for addressing uh, arguments and ideas that you find uh, objectionable, whether it's Boomer or Karen. But I, I feel, feel like from the sheet, it says like it's the N word for middle class white women. But could there ever be an N word for middle class white women? You know, usually they have the short hair. They call it the, can I speak to the manager haircut. Most of the time, they're anti-vaxxers. Mother of three, blonde, owns a Volvo, annoying, wears acrylics 24 sevens, currently at your workplace speaking to a manager. People have turned it into a Halloween costume. I think it's disgusting that you're working at this time on a Sunday. Have you got nothing better to do? <laughs> All right, I see the issue there. That like, poor woman, though, we don't know what's happened. I suppose, like, sort of, in a sense, the whole meme culture is problematic in that it for further fortifies these positions of difference and distinction. I mean, that's for me, seems like, uh, yeah, she is near a Volvo, it looks like, even uh, in the clip, she does have short hair. So it's, she's a very accurate rendering of a newly constructed stereotype. We are permitted to start work from 8 a.m. on a weekend. We've got to crack on, or we're going to get in the neck from the boss. Oh, God, he's the most reasonable working man I've ever heard. He's had a gentle clarinetish voice. We've got to get, oh, we're going to get in trouble with the boss. Absolutely lovely. Ah, oh, my son is a lawyer. This is where this is going. My son is a lawyer, and this is breaking <laughs> noise pollution laws. And I'll have you know, there's a family across the road with a newborn, and all this racket is bound to make give them a load of stress. Oh dear, bloody hell, what are we going to do? We've got to find better ways of communicating. Isn't everything about intention? Is it about intention? Well, no, no. If you accidentally po put poison in my drink, I still die. Yeah, but accidents do happen. I mean, when it comes to communication, what is our intention? Is this Karen meme a bit of a laugh or is it a kind of a malevolent slur? And also, I suppose, the when like drawing the comparison between a acknowledged and certain piece of toxic language, i.e. the N-word or other racist words for uh, different racial groups. There's, I suppose the distinction might be uh, uh, an attack on disempowered groups or aggrieved or previously abused or literally enslaved groups. I suppose power is an important part of it. That woman, for example, as an individual, didn't seem powerless. I don't I see, feel like looking at this Karen meme that it's not an attack on the disempowered. It seems to be a way of responding to a group uh, that are empowered and are critical and vocal. But by even inventing a singular term to apply to them, in a sense, that's where the, the prejudicial journey begins, unless it's all a bit of a laugh. Now, there's a bit of an opinion. Instead of being a bitch, you're calling it sorry, but you're calling it a bitch. I'll oh, set, an, set an example. I'm sorry. My kids can't hear me calling you a bitch. Your window's open. They can't hear me because they're listening to kids box. <laughs> How are we all learning to talk in this way? Where are these tunes coming from? This kind of body language? What's going on? I got a daughter. She likes to go around dressed in this 
dress. It's an elaborate party costume style. It's Belle from Beauty and the Beast, all right? That's what it is. She ain't even seen that film. She thinks it's Elsa. I don't, you know, I don't want to go too heavily into the details. Anyway, when I hang out with her in this on the walk, you know, you go for a walk these days, every single person that walks past go, that's a pretty dress. That's a pretty dress. She don't like it, my daughter. She goes, uh, she, I could tell she didn't like it. I go, do you like it when people say it? she's free? She goes, no, I don't. I goes, well, if you want, you can say to them, you'd look pretty in this dress. Alternatively, you could tell them to f off. <laughs> my wife said, don't tell a child to say that. But I'm telling her she can stand up for herself. That ain't even my point. My point is this. How come people say the same stuff all the time? What uh, We've been so conditioned that we're unawake. We're unawake. People are on rails. People are on rails, communicating on rails. It, like, we, we are mimetic. We are not organically, spontaneously interacting in the moment, serving the energy of the present. We're living parodies. We've become parodies of ourselves, And that's, I suppose, it's a culture like this in which stuff, memes like this emerge. Guy says he was questioned on a plane for doing math during a flight. A woman sitting next to the Ivy League economist told flight crew she had security concerns about the man after seeing him write in a foreign script. That's pretty funny. I suppose what a meme is, is a set of ideas, images, language and codes that can be deployed expediently in response to a group or individual, right? So like, but the, even the creation of memes enters into a territory that is potentially problematic. I mean, that person as an individual having that level of fear about someone doing maths that's pretty funny and pretty crazy but also that don't emerge out of nowhere how much hysteria have we been subject to and what do you think every time you get on a plane god what it would be to get on a plane and take off your shoes like you know we live in a climate of fear of course some of that fear is legitimate because of limit because of actual acts of terror but a significant amount of that that fear is uh, highly narrativized communicated fear, de fear deployed to create a state in which power can fulfill its agenda. But sometimes legitimate fear is deployed, organized, mobilized in order to meet certain ends. So this poor dear person who's scared of algebra, simply a, a, a victim of the power of nightmares, as Adam Curtis would call it. Leading scientist, PhD student, media expert, Karen on Facebook, you can't fight back. It's too late, Zoomers. Karen is a sexist and racist term equivalent to the Adore! <laughs> <laughs> Calling a woman Karen is an attempt to get rid of women's rights. <laughs> it gets better and better to stand up for themselves. Oh, Karen. Karen, why did you write this? So I suppose like the internet can be a place where people have a little bit of a laugh, where, where people are going to face criticism, but it can also become an anonymous space of condemnation and criticism where people don't feel the results of their actions. So me, I try to, with all my online content, remain open and loving. Seems like the Karen meme is, uh, to some degree, amusing and funny and if you feel victimized by it, it's sort of like you're nominating yourself to be victimized by it i suppose when like a new la bit of language emerges that could be used to bully people that's problematic isn't it like say when there's a, like a tv character on the t uh, on on the tv that's i don't know tubby or weird or wears glasses and they think our oh, kids at school are going to get you know bullied using that term but i suppose listen sense of humor that man it's a powerful thing having a bit of a laugh about stuff is probably an important and necessary thing at this time the intention is what's important i look at someone like pewdiepie i think that dude's got no hatred in him he's just like a sort of a joyful spriteish individual perfect for the age that we live in you know perfect person to cruise and sail the choppy waters of internet memes because he's sort of quite from he's got kind of a light touch hasn't he me i feel like in this place like oh god there's so much sensitivity there's so much danger so much sort of um, um, weaponized profanity. Me, I feel like uh, my only contributions to culture from now on are hopefully directed at making people feel better about being alive for a limited time and recognizing that all of the stuff that happens in this space is temporary and illusory and we've got to transcend it and find ways of recognizing how we're similar to one another, not different from one another.